Uh, Ms. Strickland, I should say, I guess. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, this uh, provided a memo in your packet today. Um, I worked on it with uh, City Manager Faison and uh, City Attorney Shah Khan, and it was provided as a follow-up to the May discussion uh, that we had that followed the presentation uh, by Mr. Jared McCraw, uh, the Assistant Superintendent for Student Support at Union County Public Schools. Uh, regarding a funding request for the nursing staff positions within uh, the Monroe schools. His, uh, he made his presentation, um, kind of, you know, spoke his case. Um, really, he didn't indicate the amount of the funding, and he didn't, you know, make clear if the program was contingent upon our funding. But, uh, you know, we still considered everything and uh, did, a lot of research, um, the funding is for recurring dollars, like it's salary expenses. So salaries naturally go on year after year because we don't get rid of the people at the end of the year. Um, what I found was um, <clears throat> like the city's fund balance policy um, it does not allow uh, recurring funding to be funded by undesignated fund balance. Uh, it may be used for funding one-time purchases such as the strategic plan, capital plan, or debt service expenditures, but not uh, recurring uh, such as the salary expenses. Um, I also uh, have documentation where the local government commission uh, they have concerns. Uh, they oversee local governments in the state of North Carolina and track our financial practices, including our use of fund balance and our level of fund balance. Uh, the appropriation of fund balance is a one-time revenue source and should not be used to balance recurring expenditures, is a quote from their uh, financial budget policy. Um, for example, fund balance should not be used to provide salary increases, fund permanent positions, or provide recurring services. Um, credit rating agencies look at our uses of fund balance. They give us like a, uh, a score based on our budgeting practices. And if they were to notice uh, through the use of ratios that we were using our undesignated fund balance to fund recurring expenses, then they would knock points off and that could potentially lower our rating, which would increase our borrowing costs. We wouldn't be able to get as good of an interest rate on our debt. And also the North, Car the, well, the North Carolina and the National Government Finance Officers Association, uh, their best practices advise that in all cases of having undesignated amounts of fund balance over the formal fund balance policies, use of those funds should be prohibited <coughs> as a funding source for ongoing recurring expenditures. Uh, that's a quote from their best practice manual. Um, I guess what it boils down to is, you know, finance asks if you wish to fund the Union County Public School nursing program, then it is requested by staff that we determine expense re reductions to offset the amount of funding uh, in the proposed 2020 budget. Um, Are you saying if, if they wanted to fund it, we need to take it out, take something out of the budget? Yes, sir. And not go to the reserve? Yes, sir. Okay. So you're saying that we are prohibited because of the recurring expense, because of the low of credit rating, and best practice from both the national and, 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 and state associations yes. provides against it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. um, I don't understand why this is categorized as reoccurring. Because uh, it's salaries. Because salaries go on until you lay the people off. If they were going to maybe hire temporary help for one year and it was going to end at the end of the year, then it would not be recurring. But because the staffing will remain in place, and if they request multiple years of funding, you know, just by the, the nature, the type of funding that you're providing, it's considered recurring. Even though it's looked at on a year-by-year -year basis? Yes. 
but the position, I guess you're saying that the position would be reoccurring. Uh, unless they're going to discontinue the nursing program, I would have to assume that it would be recurring. Uh, we did ask uh, Union County Public Schools for a uh, little more information per their interlocal agreement. Uh, they did provide uh, information that satisfied the accounting of funds section of the agreement. However, uh, we have not received the performance information on the program uh, as of this date. Uh, had some emails back and forth with their finance folks back in May. Am I mistaken that when we allocated the $250,000 before that we were supposed to be getting some performance reports? Yes, yeah, we don't, we do not have those. We just have basically uh, amounts that were paid to each of the individual nurses and in which school they were working at. Well, if we, if we take whatever that amount of money is, and I'm not really sure what's been proposed or what's been asked for, I got my idea. I don't know if it's 160 or 200,000, but it's somewhere in that area. And I see Mr. McGraw just come in. Uh, what you're saying, if, 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 if we take it out of the reserve fund, <clears throat> I heard what you say, it could cost us on this and cost us on that and recurring expenses. If it comes out of the budget, I, you probably not. This is not the question. You probably be to Larry. What are we going to have to take out of the budget? Uh, we what have, are we going to lose? We have uh, some recommendations uh, in your your packet. Is a list of just different items that are included in the budget uh, that could potentially be cut. Um, I didn't look at that. I beg your pardon. I should have. I didn't have time to look at that. So. Uh, I would ask you like this, Mayor. I don't know why. Can you get me over to the. Not even that, because I don't know that this will show up. I can pull it up on the. I provide a mayor with a copy of what happened. Has everybody else got this copy? Um, it's yeah. in the public. Are they looking at it? Under my name? It was in, it was in the. Yeah, packet. this is my problem. I just overlooked this. This, this not your problem. Mine. I, I'm, I should have saw this for some reason. I didn't. And I apologize. And um, Larry's classified uh, some of the priorities that he would recommend. Um, I'm going to pull it up and put it on the overhead so that we can work with it a little bit easier. Transfer area, and then my name. And then. Well, we wouldn't lose all this program here that you've got listed, would you, just because of that? Those are op the options that the staff came that up with. That you could use. Yes. And then yeah. from, the, from that list, I've, I've discussed this uh, uh, in 26. How do you get it up there? It would be <laughs> nice if we had all the counts. I struggle with this thing. I'm sorry. <clears throat> We're down two folks. And then we didn't, I'd like to see the whole council here what I'd like it's on this. Yeah. But anyway, we can carry on. Uh, I've got my question answered here. I, I don't. I don't have it. Do I need it? it? It's in the strategic packet. Oh. It was emailed out. Project. You don't see this? It starts on page 14 of the packet. Would you hand that down, please? It's still dark. And again, Mayor and Council, we do not have a request from the school system as to the amount and for how many years they seek the funding. Is it a per year thing? So while we provide this information to you, we would note that that information, as the finance director has pointed out, has not been provided. Oh, okay. Before we get to any of this, I think we need to talk about this. Yeah, there's a page one or a page two. Of course, with this stuff. We are responding to all of council. We do 160. Here it goes. 60. Okay. Um, 
this list is in the packet again, and uh, some of the things that Larry had looked at, it's a little hard to see on there, but he uh, prioritized outside agency funding. Uh, that's in the amount of, that's the increase from last year to this year. Uh, if we cut it back to the last year's level, uh, that could save 37, almost $38,000. Uh, priority two council discretionary funding is twenty one thousand. Oh, let me go back, Mayor. Um, before we go through our cuts, can we hear from UCPS to see exactly what they're asking I'm, for? I'm gonna bring him up next. I, I, I already told him he's next. Okay. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, it, it seems like from before he told uh, Mr. McGraw told us what the. The, the salary requirements were for two nursing positions. It was eighty thousand dollars a piece. That's one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. If, mm -hmm. if if we looked at one hundred and sixty thousand to help Union County Public Schools, uh, I think that would cover it. They're not asking for the full two hundred. I, I don't. I don't have a problem helping the schools. I'm, in fact, I'm all for helping the schools. But if we can find the money where I don't have to vote to take money that we're going to take out of our budget. That we're going to lose a, a possibly a 50 percent of the Christmas bonus, or or whatever else is in there. I've seen a lot of different items. I, I can't constantly vote to take away from our folks. But if you can show me how we can come up and do it without taking away from our people or our budget, and just saying, well, we're not going to do this, and we're not going to do this, and we're going to do this, I'm on board. But I can't take away from us, we, or me to fund something else. And I would also like to know with regards to the school, you know, like their funding, like Title I funds and Epic grants and, okay. you know, things of that nature. I need to get some information from what they're doing with their funding before. All right. We, uh, we, we may call you back, Mr. Mr. McGraw. Absolutely. We, it's you at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I know the last time, good afternoon, good afternoon. sorry, uh, I'm Jared McCraw, I think I've met everybody, so um, the last time you asked about EPIC funding, I did check into that, it cannot be used for nurse funding, okay. so we did check into that. So is there any way that the nursing funding, that the nurses can be reclassified so that those funds can be used with regards to the EPIC grant? According to our finance office, no. The EPIC funding has to be used for other things, not nursing. So. Um, I did ask them about that specifically because I know that question came up, and the answer to that I was told was no, we cannot use EPIC funding for nurses. So the two nurses that last year that the funding provided provided a higher level of service in the city. Um, oh, yeah? It, it did. That's what it did. It, it put a nurse at all the seven schools, the high priority schools. Um, as Mr. Anderson said, um, the cost of the two nurses is approximately 80000 apiece. That's not all salary. That's benefits, as you all know, uh, different things. So it, if you want to, 160000 is basically what it costs to provide two additional nurses within those city schools. Um, I did look at other funding sources, and I think what we're using now funds nurses um, across our school district. and the city schools would get the same service if we didn't have these two nurses as the other schools across the county are getting. Mm. Right. But because of the two nursing positions, the city schools were getting a higher level of service. They each had a nurse assigned to those schools five days a week. Let me ask you a question to make sure that I don't misunderstand. You're saying that schools will still have a nurse with just not the level of service. And when I say levels of service, they have to share a nurse. So some schools will have one three days a week, and then the other schools may have one two days a week. We share those nurses. We always have nurses to respond. They're just not on site sometimes. And in my proposal the last time, we talked about someone like myself who is not a certified nurse would then have to look at injuries that may occur, bee stings that may occur, and we, we would have to decide whether or not we need to call the nurse, EMS, um, I prefer a nurse makes that decision, a health care, care professional. Have you determined what the response time is for a nurse to get to a school if you call? Well, it's just according to how busy they are at other schools, Miss Anthony. Um, they're busy. Um, our nurses 
you saw within the city responded or had over 21,000 health room visits just in the city schools itself. That accounted for about, what, 22% of all health room visits across all 53 schools. So at this time of the year, there's a lot of activities at school. There's sometimes more injuries that occur. If you've been in schools, they're having uh, recess and they're having um, different things at this time for summer. So, but um, I can't tell you exactly what the response time. Have be. all other possible funding sources been exhausted? We we have used all the funding we have earmarked for nursing to fund the other 41 nurses that we currently have. So. Has um, the Uni County uh, Commissioners heard uh, the presentation offered any solution? Uh, we did not ask for any more funding this school year for nursing. Mm -hmm. Now, in the future, we want to look at our nursing program to see if we can expand it. But at this point, mm -hmm. we ask for nine counselors within our budget. That's what we yeah. asked for. This okay. Year. Is there a specific reason why you did not ask, ask the uh, county? Um, the superintendent's budget proposal, we looked through it, and uh, the counseling positions focused on social and emotional learning and mental health mm -hmm. were what we decided we would ask for for increases this year when it come to personnel. What about the Title I funding? Would Title I not be available to fund uh, for nurses at these particular schools where there's a need? I think if we used it for nurses, it would pull it away from other projects, Mr. McGee. Um, you know, it's just like you were talking about with your budget. If we decide to use it for <coughs> something else, if we used it for nursing, it would take another service away. Yes. So, That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. You're just moving the money from one source to another. But if it's a necessity, for pro if it's a priority, wouldn't that be something that could be possibly done at those schools? I mean, but they get a, it's a pretty substantial amount that they get for the Title I, ones, I right? don't know exactly the amount that they get, but we do have, we're able to move the money to where we feel it's needed for different projects. And um, I think that money is probably allocated already for other projects at this time. Um, so we would, if your decision is not to fund the two nurses, um, we would have to move nurses to where they would be in certain locations, certain days, and we're going to give we're going to give students the best service we can give them. I don't want you all to think that we're going to provide the best service we can. We're very thankful for what you did last year. Do you know if there are any pilot programs uh, been funded with Title One funds that, that perhaps could get funding for the two nurses? Um, we have not had any pilot programs as far as nursing with Title One money. Um, we have used some of that money for um, the mental health therapists at schools, um, social workers at schools. So there are needs that are being met. Mm -hmm. um, but the two nurses that were provided with your funds, mm -hmm. with Monroe City funds, funded the two nurses. Do you think it's a greater need to provide the physical health or the mental health? That's a very hard question, yeah. Ms. Anthony, and I'll tell you, it's all needed. Um, at this time, um, for the whole child, yeah. you have to take care of them mentally, socially, emotionally, and physically, and, and it all wraps together. Sometimes nurse visits are based on um, social and emotional needs. They're meeting sometimes, it's not an injury, it's they're meeting the social and emotional needs of some of those children, mm -hmm. and um, the care they show those children, and. Uh, just making sure they're okay. It may not be a physical injury. It may be a more of an emotional injury. Mr. McCraw, I think one reason the council is asking you uh, specifically is that the prior request not only funded nurses but also funded a social worker. It did. Is that not your? Is that the re not request not being made this year of the of the council? I know we were specifically talking about nurses today. Um, we are getting more support when it comes to social workers and mental health therapists. Uh, we're uh, hopefully when the county approves their budget, it's looking like 10 mental health therapists mm -hmm. and then five social workers throughout the school year. Um, at this time, I think the greatest need, if you're asking me, is if you want to fund two nurses. I think that 
the nurses have 25% of their education in mental health. Mm -hmm. And so they're able to address some of those needs too. So did you say that there were no federal programs available to help fund for nurses in the UCPS or? I've not looked in to see if there's any kind of grants or anything. You have not? Key? I've not, I've not looked. Um, I can ask the supervisors to look in that in the future. Um, a lot of the federal grants we've looked into are more safety oriented like for SROs, for uh, equipment, that kind of thing when it comes to security, but we can look into if there's health related federal grants. We're always, if, it, if there's a grant out there and it's free money, I want to look into it. Custodian, we know our hearts are in the wrong place, our pocketbooks are not. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, we already so doing this. Uh, field needs SROs. Or, okay, so, so we we three thousand is what we did. Three or four. So we funded a hundred and three thousand for SROs. I'll defer to the finance director, but we're now looking at the chart that was provided, which are the resources contributed directly or in kind to UCPS or Union Academy. There's a line item for resource officers provided in FY18. It was 103,000, and year to date, it's 94,922. Is that the resource officer costs? I believe is what the mayor is asking. Yes, it is. Did you say Union Academy? <clears throat> and Union Academy, but the thing is that the idea is that we look at the funding from that and both. So yeah. regardless, it's, I, I think you guys have a role as oversight for them, but uh, to a degree. But regardless, the question was being asked by the mayor was what amount is being paid for SROs. Okay. We provide, we provide SROs for Union Academy too? You provide an SRO at Union Academy. You provide them for all schools in the city of Monroe and uh, Union Academies within the city. It is a public school, even though it is a charter academy. But it is considered so it receives that at, uh, uh, in accordance well, with your directives. Mr. McGraw, the last funding we did, I was carrying your flag, and I still carry your flag. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think the best kept secret from the folks in, uh, in the county or Monroe, the city hall, is especially the middle school. Not just them, but all schools, but your program that you've got going on in the middle school. Yes, sir. I think it's fantastic that you've got that medical program over there in, in the middle school, which will advance into the high school as the years go by, and they'll come out and, and have an opportunity to advance themselves into some, some type of medical facility or medical program. I just wish that somehow everybody could know about that program and everyone could go by that school and see what those, those young folks are doing. It's, it's fantastic. And I think the school system is doing a great job right here in the city. And I don't have a problem with some funding, uh, <clears throat> you know, the 160, the 200, or whatever. I don't have a problem with some funding. I'm speaking for myself. They speak for themselves. But if, if, if we've got to take it out of our budget, and you and I, and people deal with budget know what budgets are yes sir that means that you lose something and give it to somebody yes sir. and, and uh, that's the only heartburn I've got if there's some way we could figure out how to fund something part of it or a little bit of it or all of it or whatever I don't have a problem with it I, it's a staff or somebody can come up and say well here's what we can do and not take away I don't have a problem yep. right now that's that's my kind of heartburn is what we're gonna take away and I'll be glad mayor Council, if, if Ms. Strickland would like to work on that to give you a better idea of exactly what we could do to make it happen. Well, when I when I carried the flag for you, and not only me, the other folks carried the flag. I'm just talking about myself. Uh, I thought it was a great thing, and I still think it's a great <coughs> thing. But I didn't have to vote on taking something away from somebody else. But if that's in my corner now, I don't. I, 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 like I say, if it's some funding, a little bit of funding, or whatever that we can do, and not take away, and I keep repeating myself. That's where I want to be, because I'm, I'm kind of in the corner. And these budgets, as we all know, when you're dealing with a budget, you're between a rock and a hard place. What are you going to do? You're going to do this, or you're going to do that, or you're not going to do anything at all. You do this on a yearly basis, as we do. But that, you know, that's where I am. I think you're doing a great job. 
Well, I know it's a difficult decision. We've had to make difficult decisions when Absolutely. it comes to different funds. But I know some of the questions Ms. Strickland asked, I just had questions about those before I answered them. She said, you know, there were questions that yes. had been asked. And some of the things we had in our presentation the last time we felt, I felt maybe could answer some of those questions, but I can talk to her about that later. But just meeting the goals and objectives of Section 8, I know sure. you had a question about that. But. Mr. McCraw, council is, will ask this question of staff. And so, so what we've, I think, finally determined is your request is for a maximum of $160,000. Is this a one-year request or a multi-year request? Um, I would like to come back each year and present to you what we're doing, uh, the, the positive impact you're having on our students, um, and as on our staff. It helps our staff members, our team members too. But I think if you're asking me what's best, I think it's best each year if you fund us for us to come back, make the request, and let you know what we're doing with those funds. So you're, make, you're saying this is a one-year only request? Yes, sir. But you intend to come back and ask council for this funding again, making it a recurring request, is that correct? Um, I, I can't tell you in the future what will be funded by either grants, but if, if we did not have the funding available in the future, I would intend to come back and ask for two positions again. But I will tell you if I will look at grants, I will look at other opportunities. I guess my concern is with all of it, um, you know, with regards to education, I feel like that is the responsibility of the county, county commissioners and board of education. However, being that the schools are within the city, I feel like there is an opportunity to partner. And as a council, well, personally myself, I'm willing to help to support programs within the schools, whether it be nursing programs or any other programs here for our students. Not so much with providing the salaries for employees for, for any kind of public school system. Um, and so that's why I was asking, you know, what have you guys is also with regards to, you know, asking the Board of Education and asking the county commissioners for additional funding, um, you know, doing your due diligence, whereas you've done your research for other grants that may offer some nursing um, support for the schools and um, you know and, and it, it doesn't sound like that has been done um, this year um, so I'm just just trying to really figure out you know how we can support because just like the mayor said I don't want to take any monies from what we're doing as a city you know the budget's already tight enough and to add additional uh, weight to that would be um, would be tough on our employees and our staff where I stand, I believe in education. My own forward, I believe in helping the schools. I think it's a responsibility of citizens to do all that they can. But I do, don't believe that we are responsible for, for, for staffing. Um, even though we like to help because it is a recurring expense, we are prohibited from helping. And um, it's, it seems that there may be some other funding opportunities that have not been pursued. And, you know, in my opinion, perhaps those other sources, you know, you can seek them out. Um, but right now, we're just in a space where we would have to take from the citizens of Monroe uh, to fund positions for two nurses. And I just can't good, in good conscience do that. Any more questions, comments? How about from Mr. Strickland? Any of a budget to items if you want to ask any questions from her. Anything from our manager? All right. You can come to okay. Uh, no other discussion. We have a motion. I don't hate to make it, but I guess it's got to be made. Um, I move that at this time that uh, we deny the request. Got a second. I have a motion to deny. I have a second. Uh, all in favor for all in favor aye. Uh, wait a minute, I think maybe I said it wrong. <laughs> Let me make sure what I'm, what I'm it'll be in support of the motion to deny. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I was trying to say and couldn't say it so big. Yeah, all in support to deny the motion. Deny aye. the funding. Deny the funding. Say aye. Uh -huh. All in favor of funding. Actually, it'd be opposed. That would be opposing the motion. So, all opposing motion. 
Mira, I, I look at the clerk, and the clerk and I are not sure. Right. It, appears, it appears to be four votes in support of the motion to deny funding. It is not clear if there is a fifth vote. So I do not know if the mayor pro tem has voted. And if the mayor pro tem would be able to tell us that, that would, I think, assist the I clerk. I voted with everybody. Sir. I voted with everybody. All right, so it is, so it is the motion. The motion One, two, passes three. five to zero. The not, not, that so I, not that I want. Not that I wanted to. Not that yeah, I with a heavy heart. No, sir. With heavy hearts, and I do too. Very heavy hearts. Heart. Thank you. I mean, I, you know. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Thank McGraw. You. Appreciate it. Okay. Item two. Um, you're, just, you're just a poly solid waste, uh, Brian. Is that you, sir? Uh, Jim. Jim. Brian's other brother, Jim. <laughs> Yeah, Brian's little brother, Jim. Okay. Jim, we'll turn it over to you, sir. Good afternoon. City Council is requested to consider three actions this afternoon. Uh, the first is to consider awarding a contract for a five-year term for solid waste services beginning <clears throat> October 1st, 2019 to Waste Pro Incorporated. Second is to consider an additional staff position for solid waste. And the last consideration is to uh, approve changes to the uh, fee schedule. The uh, engineering department was requested by the Public Enterprise Committee and approved by City Council on November 6, 2018 to advertise a request for a proposal from qualified vendors for solid waste services. Two proposals, one from Waste Pro Incorporated and the other from Waste Connections were received on April 12, 2019 by the City. A copy of the proposal tabulation is provided in your agenda package. On April 23rd, the selection committee comprised of Chairperson Sluda Anthony, Committee Member Loretta Melicon, Ryan Bourne, Assistant City Manager, Lisa Steinwinter, Planning Director, Lori Broom, Solid Waste Coordinator, and myself met to discuss the two proposals that were received. As outlined in RFP, the two vendors, Waste Pro and Waste Connections, were selected to present to the Public Enterprise Committee information to highlight their proposal as well as their company. Each proposal was limited to 30 minutes, inclusive of questions and answers. The Public Enterprise Committee met at the regularly scheduled meeting time on May 23rd, 2019 to consider the proposals received and PowerPoint presentations by each vendor. At the conclusion of the presentations, the Public Enterprise Committee discussed each vendor and the presentations made. The committee unanimously determined that Race Pro Incorporated was the vendor that showed the overall capability of meeting the service level expectations of the city and recommended, as well as staff, awarding the contract to Waste Pro for a five-year contract term. Before, before turning the meeting over to Waste Pro for their presentation to City Council, I would like to point out a difference in the service level, level between the two proposals received. In Waste Pro's PowerPoint presentation, the vendor identifies the use of three rear end loaders for yard waste plus a grappler truck. The submitted proposal only identified two rear loaders in these grappler truck. When questioned, they responded that they added a truck for service in peak season. York Waste is one of our biggest complaint generators. Race Pro uses a total of four pieces of equipment for yard waste and one real load for bulk item pickup, bring their equipment total to five, and the other vendor only proposed two pieces of equipment, one for yard waste and one for bulky. So a five to two ratio. Uh, so, and they did not include a rack, Rappler truck. Uh, therefore, you know, the proposals we were looking at were really not apples to apples on service level as it relates to yard waste. And they actually went down 40% from our current cost for yard waste. The uh, other vendor did. How much was that? When you say 40%, what are you talking about? Uh, the other vendor. Um, 
Let's see. Currently, the city is paying for York Way, so they to our current contract, $48,500. And they went down from, uh, they went down to $29,000, the other vendor did. So they cut their costs. In other words, the first was $48,000, mm -hmm. and they cut it to $29,000. Yeah, that's what Waste Connections did now. On Waste Pros Con, they went up by what, about 1% to $49,277. $49,277? Yes. When cut 21 up one, 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 well one. it's easy to cut your cost when you're not using the same number of pieces of equipment oh, i know but i'm stopping it any other questions before i turn it over to waste pro the only, only question i got and i think i know the answer to that how much is it uh to propose uh to go up in what we've been paying a hundred thousand a hundred thousand a year um if you look at the proposal, uh, you have for solid waste only. That includes residential and business pickup or recycling, bulky, and trash. Uh, the proposal went up uh, 15 percent. We're currently paying one million eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, and as proposed, it would go up to two million one hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. That's a 15 percent increase. For the uh, dumpsters, there's another component. The dumpsters are paid by the, the various departments. And that went up, uh, well, both vendors it went up. It went up from 32450 per month to 69819 per month. And, uh, I mean, per year. And overall, if you include both solid waste and the dumpsters together, the uh, currently we're paying one million eight hundred eighty thousand dollars per year and it's going up to two million one hundred ninety eight thousand dollars per year a 16.9 percent increase well um, and maybe this is a question for you or maybe for one of them but they i understand now that you still using the union county dumping station is that correct yes and they will continue to use that that's correct that's in their proposal and the other one is answer county correct yeah. well the other uh they have their own transport station. They're just going to move to that. Yeah, you know, take it. Oh, they will continue it. using Union County's. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'm saying the dumping station. I guess that's right. Yeah. Of the, of but the, they were Yeah. I got that. Okay. Other questions, Captain? In this Comment? presentation, is it going to talk about how to better deal with yard waste? What, sir? In this presentation, is it going to talk about how to better deal with? Yes, uh, uh, Phil, there is some slides. But on. we got a lot on the sides of our roads mm -hmm. that needs to be cleaned up. And with that, I'll just turn it over to Grace. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to present to you and uh, continue our partnership. Uh, my name is Jennifer Herring. I've been with this contract now seven years. My title is uh, Director of Government Relations, so I handle uh, all city contracts. I have a couple of people here with me that will participate in my slide as we, we go through the, the presentation, but uh, I'd like to turn it over to, uh, to Bob Hires, and uh, he will, uh, let's see, go on to our first slide here and talk a little bit about uh, Waste Pro as a whole, as the company. You may have to help me. Mm -mm -mm. Just in the presentation mode. There we go. Bob, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Um, I'm Bob Hires. Explain um, my position with the company. I'm one of the founders of the company. We started it um, uh, 18 years ago. Um, I'm. Uh, well, I like the term called semi-retired. I like that position right now, but I'm one of the founders, one of the owners of the company. It's a privately owned company. Um, we started, um, said 18 years ago with uh, uh, five people and, uh, and two trucks, and we're currently running uh, over 2,700 trucks, almost 4, 000, close to 4,000 employees. So we've been, I'm very proud of that. Um, one of our um, goals is to, was to remain privately owned 
not being controlled by any large companies out of state, out of, I mean, out of region. We're a southeastern United States-based company. Um, I've lived in North Carolina. I've lived in South Carolina. I've lived in Florida my entire life in the southeast. Um, but um, uh, just briefly, we've grown. The slide shows that I won't delve too much in that. It's just we, we've grown. We've, we're very uh, honored to have, uh, to have been considered again by the city of Monroe. Thank you for considering us. Uh, it's very been very important to us. Our, our, late, our latest new facilities here in Monroe that we built, we have a uh, one of our guys that also started the company is uh, also a general contractor, so he built that facility, oversaw the building of it. So um, without taking too much more of your time, I just want to tell you I appreciate the uh, opportunity and hope you consider us again for, uh, to continue on with your, with your contract. And uh, thank you again for having us here this evening, and thank you for all the years of providing us income for ourselves and our employees. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bob. I, I just want to say yeah. to you and, of course, the other employees to your company, uh, we appreciate what y'all do throughout the year. I know you on different campaigns, y'all come in and help us. And uh, I, I want you to know that we as a city and myself and the council appreciate what y'all do on that. So thank you for, you know, participating in our various cleanups and stuff. And we pre we appreciate what you do there. Thank, thank you, sir. Know that we, know, we know that you do do Well, that. it's very nice. I'll pass thank that you. on to everybody. I and uh, I do get some calls, but I'm going to always get some calls. We're not going to ever get it perfect. No. I know that, but I do get some calls. But I got a good person. I can hand it right off to uh, back here with Brew. Yeah. So she takes care of my problems yeah. and she goes with it elsewhere. But uh, I guess I'll always get some calls. But as Mr. Anderson was addressing a while ago, some of this yard waste and stuff, I do get a lot of calls on that. Yeah. But uh, and I know you're working hard on that, and well, and I'm not going to get this cut down to zero. I'm going to get some calls. Uh, but uh, we just appreciate what y'all have done in the past as far as uh, the various projects that we do when you send out your volunteers. I've been out there and went them and seen them. Thank you for that. Well, yeah, thank you, sir. If you, if you look at our logo, it says right underneath the Caring and for Our Community. Ms. Broom, I think she does a good job. But as a, as a liaison between uh, the city and you folks, I think she does a good job. With it. Well, we do too. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I'll pass it on. Any other questions for Mr. Bob? Sorry, How about any question for uh, Ms. Jennifer? Here, no, I, I certainly I, I understand somewhat. Everything goes up. I hate to see it go up. I hate to see that some of this passed on to our, you know, our citizens who uh, we all work hard, but you know, sometimes you just have to bite the bullet. Uh, it's not what we want. It's what we have to do sometimes. Uh, any other question for Miss Jennifer? Comment? Here and done. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we. I'm sorry. I make a motion that we accept the uh, proposal from Waste Pro Incorporated and award them the contract for the next five years. And can you also add to your motion to authorize the city manager to negotiate and... Uh, to negotiate the final terms contract and execute the documents. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? Hearing none, we're back in business. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate y'all coming. I'd like to make just a comment, too. I want to thank Jim and his staff for yes. filing a lot of the information. To Mr. Lula's, uh, that's your committee, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Mr. Lula's committee. I think they all worked hard to put this together. So, yeah, I, I didn't mean to take over. I wanted to get her in. You go right ahead and make it. Yes, sir, Jennifer. Good thank to you see you. Thank you. Good to good see you. Thank you. Good thank you. Good thank you. Good thank you. Good 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 you. Well, I had some hair back there. At least you still have your Well, that was good about it. Thank you for coming. Barrett, I apologize for interrupting you. I just wanted to include the committee, but go ahead with your comments to Jim. No, this was a, and, and Saluda can tell you, we, and, and frankly, this was a major decision, and mm -hmm. it was made, uh, our process was made easier by. Jim and his staff and the work they did on it. And Loretta will tell you that also. Yeah, I know. I've, I've been on some of the committees. And it is, it's a hard work and major decision. But, but Jim, you and the committees and Ms. Lula, I appreciate all your hard work on that. Thank you, sir. All right, the next item is item three. Uh, yes, sir, you still, still have two more things on this one. We have. Two additional so actions. Did that, that yeah, we did yeah, a. Yeah, you need all right, a uh, uh, city manager to negotiate the final terms. Uh, B, you, you've approved that, so now you're at C and D. 
see in the solid waste technician position and the ordinance amending the physical year 2019 and 2020 fee schedule. Uh, any discussions on C and D? You, you want to present? You want, would you like for me to present something? I, I have prepared something. We have proposed in the, uh, as part of this uh, package to uh, add an additional position. Uh, we are requesting a solid waste technician position to assist the solid waste coordinator with everyday division duties. Uh, I have two primary reasons for making this request. First, our current coordinator has limited time in the field to address solid waste issues due to the number of calls as well as emails received in a typical day. Calls are primarily centered on misses for yard waste and cart repair. The goal and it is expected by our citizens that we respond back within the same business day. This leaves very little time, if any, available for being out in the field. The coordinator is dependent upon a third party and it's primarily code enforcement to be our eyes in the field. The city does have a problem with um, recycling co contamination, and this further warrants that we get a person out in the field to look at this, these issues as, and see how best we can get, you know, notify our residents of the contamination. Uh, second, the position is to provide a much needed backup and responsibilities. When the coordinator is absent for vacation, sick leave, or out of office for any reason, other engineering staff are taken from their daily responsibilities to ensure solid waste functions continue to be addressed in a timely fashion. In most cases, the person is taken completely away from their assigned engineering task for the day and to handle solid waste. Uh, in short, the assistant position is to participate in the various daily tasks and serve as backup for daily responsibilities, allowing the solid waste to become more progressive overall in addressing the needs of Monroe. Engineering does recommend approval of the position solid waste technician as full time in the coming budget year. Any Can questions? you explain to us what that person's, what their major responsibilities will be? Uh, <clears throat> it will be backup answering phone calls. Mm -hmm. It'll also give us another person that can go out in the field and look at things or be. In but the they, they just board. won't be answering yeah. the phone. Yes. I mean, they, they do something other than answer the phone. Yes. Like I said, we have a problem with recycling contamination. We need to get some mm -hmm. feet on the ground in, in the field. And one thing we thought about was taking the uh, community maintenance workers and getting golf carts and putting two people out in front of the uh, trucks, inspecting the recycling containers and tagging them if <coughs> they have issues and doing like that. But you have to have, we need people to be able to do that. Okay, so, so what would we have to cut in the budget to get this position? Uh, well, it's covered in the fee schedule that we're recommending. You recommend this? So this person be more out in the field kind of looking well, at what's be going Well, be more in the office, really, and give Lori more of an opportunity to go out in the field. But there will be opportunity for that person to go out in the field. So the, 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 the fees are going to pay this person's salary? Yes. So there's it nothing in the budget included. we'd have to cut? to fill this position. There would not be anything cut to fill this position. Is that right? If That's the correct. fee schedule as recommended the, 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 is approved. Um, this position and, and the cost of solid waste, yard waste, et cetera, is a fee-based operation. Yeah. Independent, self-sufficient. So this position will be paid out of the and the benefits, sanitation collection. Versus yes. benefits as well. But it will also depend on which option you approve. I mean, you have to, you have before you two options for an increase in fees with also cover this and so you'll have to decide on which option you pick but either one will fund the position well i certainly agree that uh lori broom needs some help i don't know how she does it all now with taking all the calls that she does uh i, I make a motion we approve the solid waste technician position second have a motion a second any discussion you're not all in favor uh -huh. you opposed here, no, that's passed. Okay. I do have one question, though. I should have asked before. Are you going to advertise the position, or it just goes on the website that that position? It will be advertised. Okay. Okay. Item D. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
I was going to say the last action is changes to the fee schedule. And uh, we have two options provided in your package. Option one is a full rate fee implementation effect for July 1st, 2019. Option two is a phase fee implementation over a three year period. And I've prepared a chart showing how we would do that. Um, for option one, all classifications or increase two dollars with the exception of residential that is increased two dollars and fifty five cents and also if you look at this chart it also shows the uh, number of cars the number of years that we've been at the current rate the uh, other option we have right now is to phase this over a three year period. And this shows the graph, this chart shows how we would do that. And uh, with the exception of residential, the increase or 75% for the first two years, with last year at 50 cent for most of the classifications except for residential. And for residential, the increase is proposed at 85 cents per year. 85 cents yeah yeah for each year on the month period per, for, for three years phase it in yeah this is the proposed monthly rates well instead of going up 200 two dollars fifty five cents if you use phased in you go in at 85, 85 cents cent. for a three-year period three-year period yeah. i'll make a motion that we go with the three-year phase in right i second that i have a motion in a second let's phase it in and I think that would be good for our people. We won't hit them all at one time. Uh, so I have a motion to have a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the phase in? Aye. Uh, that passes. Okay, Mr. Jim, you got all your wishes there, brother. <laughs> Seems like your day today. All right. Uh, item three city facilities and janitorial service. Uh, Brian. Buying some new brooms. <laughs> We're buying some new brooms. <laughs> okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, we're here to possibly award the contract for our city facilities, janitorial services, and authorize the city manager to execute the documents. Um, proposals were received on May 24th, um, and this is this was a request for proposals it was not a competitive bid process so they were opened and just read aloud we were submitted four proposals and the scoring is in your packet um, we are looking at uh, requesting the contract be awarded to American facility services in the amount of two hundred forty six thousand three hundred sixty dollars um, the initial contract will be for a period of 12 months, commencing July 1 or thereabouts uh, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Uh, and we'll have um, two um, option of two mutually agreed upon two year extensions, which would give the, them a possible five year contract for this RFP. And our extensions will be made based upon their performance, uh, satisfactory performance. Uh, there are sufficient funds in the proposed budget for the contract. And um, this did not go to General Services Committee, but uh, Chairman Kazaya agreed to move this item to full council due to the timing constraints. So staff is recommending and request that council award the contract for city facilities janitorial services to American Facility Services in the amount of $246,360 uh, and authorize the manager to execute any and all necessary documents. Okay. Well, Brian, this American Facility Services, is that a local company? It is not. It is not? No. Where no. Is in, they are out of um, Georgia. But they have local people? But they have, well, Part of their proposal was they would um, have their some of their own people, but hire some of uh, Barry's people, and then 
whatever need they need, they would hire locally. And this is a change that. in the services that we have now? Uh, it's, we, we would be changing from Green's cleaning service, yes. We have been with Green's for 12 or 13 years. It's been a very good relationship. This was another hard decision we had to make, but it was time for this service to go out to bid. So this was insufficient, this service? No, no. There were, we were in no way unhappy. It was just after a period of time, we like to go out to bid to see what's out there. The Greens put in a bid? Yes, they did. The they were the highest. Oh, okay. But it wasn't based on totally on price. It mm -hmm. was based on their experience, and you could see the criteria on the scoring sheets there. Um, and we picked the, the company that scored the highest was kind of right down the middle, cost wise. So. Okay. Any other questions? Comment? Hearing none, do I have a motion? Motion to award the contract to American Facility Services and to allow the city manager to execute documents. Second. I have a motion to second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Hearing none, that passed. Thank you. Okay. All right. Does any council have anything? Anyone else have anything? If not, we'll recess. We'll recess for the afternoon meal if you're eating, and uh, we'll be back at 6 o'clock for a regular meeting. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate y'all folks coming. How you doing? All right, sir. How about you?